The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We start the day with the German DAX and then also the FTSE. As you can see, they've been in uh, sell patterns and they started to roll over today. And so, you know, whether they're going to continue or not, you know, no one knows that. But uh, that's what it's looking at. By the way, I have an announcement to make. Uh, we will no longer be having Norm Winsky or Stan Harley. As our guest, uh, Norm thought it was going to be a high on Tuesday. He was wrong by a day and a half. But Stan Harley, he was wrong by 12 hours. I mean, I, I just can't uh, can't have guests like that that come 12 hours within a potential high. Folks, this market is acting so bearish that if you're not scared, you should be. I mean, they got the most bullish news that God could ever give it, and it ain't doing very well. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with those of you that don't belong to the 24-7 group, because those of you that do belong to it know that I have been up all night sending out stuff that is uh, actually it all worked relatively well for some reason today. But this is a, this is a chart of Apple. If you want to see the video, of what I sent out, I think it was about 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Tucson time, about what was happening in the market. This is what we were expecting beforehand and what was happening and what we were expecting. And if you'll take a look at that, uh, just send it to LarryPesavento at gmail.com, and I'll send out the Apple video so that you can see the type of uh, things we sent out. I sent one on gold on a sell at uh, 1788. It went down to 1754. And I had the crude oil at the, right at the high. I mean, 65, uh, 65.39, the high was 65.43, and it's a dollar below that. And then, of course, we were short the Dow Jones from um, Monday, and that is still working. And as a matter of fact, I'm trying to get find a place to add to that because I think we, we're we going to have something really serious happening, folks. When you get really good news like this market has had, and it doesn't respond, that, that's not a very good sign. Now, it could rally and make new highs on the day, and I have egg all over my face, but fortunately, I like omelets, so it's not a big deal. Anyway, let's just look at a couple things that happened last night. If you remember, we were talking about Dr. Copper yesterday. Uh, we talked about the little three-drive pattern that it made uh, on Wednesday. Here we are on Thursday. You see what happened. It rallied from 1441 all the way up to 1455. And what it did this morning, folks, is it took out that high at 1454. It hit 1455.10 and is now trading way below the red box. Now, if that's not bad action uh, with good news, uh, nothing is. So that's another one that looks very, very uh very, very suspect as we look at it. So we'll do one thing at a time, of course, but that's what we're watching as we look at some of these here today. Now, I will mention this was the one that we were looking at. I sent a video out on this one, too, on the crude oil. We took the loss in crude oil yesterday, if you recall, and uh, we made that back times three times today. So that's working relatively well. And the Dow Jones has been looking extremely bearish, even with the market, with the S&P up 40 handles almost, folks. Uh, the Dow Jones could not even get up more than 120 points. I mean, that was really, really bearish. And uh, I don't know. I and, and not only that, but it's over that big super full moon that, uh, you know, Stan was talking about it. Norm was talking about it. Uh, we were talking about it. So maybe this is maybe a short-term high, but at least it was a short-term high. The copper, yes, you're right, Bill. Copper was a head and shoulders. The problem was uh, when it made a new high, it broke the head and shoulders. But what that was was a false breakout. That's why I was putting up it was an ABCD there on a, on a half-hour chart. Uh, making a new high at 55.10. When you make a high break out of a big consolidation like that and can't go anywhere, boy, that's a sign there was there was no follow through buying, and that's why it was giving you a pretty good idea. You know, that's it. <laughs> Ricky Bobby shaking big. Very good, Jimmy D. I hope you like it down there in Tennessee. It's my one of my favorite states down there in 
Tennessee, I love that place. Knoxville, all of it. I just like everything about Tennessee. And that happens to be where my good friend, Mr. Byron Tucker, is from. He's Okay, i got to show you some things here. Jeff Huge is going to be our guest here. This stuff is from um, Andy Pacioli out of uh, London. Uh, he's a, a, a Elliott guy. He's also on the board of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. What he's showing you now, I'm going to show you a series of charts going back about uh, 100 years, and you're going to see the importance of these dates here between uh, April 19th and April 30th. This happens to be uh, 1901. Then we're going to take another one, and we're going to take a quick look at this one. We're going to have Andy as a guest next week, and who's going to discuss this. Here's one from 1981. That was the high of 1981, and as those of you that are in the market know that it went down. You know, Reagan had got erect, erected. <laughs> okay, all you woke people, you got me. He was elected in November of 80, and then in, uh, the market topped in May of um, April of 80, 80, 1981. It went down for about a year and a half, and then it bottomed in August of 1982 and never looked back. Okay, that was that one. Now there's a, there's a couple others here, so just bear with me here. Here is a 19. Here is one here for 1971. We'll get this up here, and uh, I don't know. I don't think he uh, needed it, uh, Cindy, but I don't know. I met uh, I met Nancy and Ron uh, twice at uh, fundraisers back in California when he was running for governor. And one of my very, very dear friends was invited to the White House when he got elected because he was a big uh, contributor to the Reagan folks. So that's it. Now, here's another one. If you remember the one that uh, uh, that I'll, I'm going to show it to you anyway, because you'll be interested to look at this. This is the one that Andy's looking at for cycles. And you'll notice that what I want you to do now is if you'll just take a quick look. These are two guys in different parts of the world looking at very, very similar type things. This is the one from we had from, from Stan Harley yesterday telling you uh, that's what it is. And when you stop and think that the, you know, that, that big super full moon with the Mercury perihelion, that must mean something. Because look, what we dropped 40 handles almost from the, well, you know, we had 30 some handles in the S&P, and it's only been uh, six hours. So who knows what could happen. If we go below uh, the, uh, what was that number would be 67, uh, 5167. That takes out yesterday's low, folks. In other words, you got the most the most bullish stuff the Fed could ever ever give you. They said this. They said we're going to back you no matter what. That, that, that's basically what they said. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, if you want to know who said that, it was Rodney Dangerfield, Mr. Z. It was Rodney Dangerfield. Okay, let's move on here. Also, we're watching the uh, the grains here. If you'll bear with me one second, folks. I am looking at the soybeans here. Oh, man, shut the front door. They already hit it. Oh, doggone it. I was trying to buy the beans at 01, and I missed it. Son of a gun. All right, yeah, move on to the next one. Okay, let's get on here for just a little bit. We got down, how low did we get? We got down to 60-something, didn't we? We got down to 68 so far in the uh, in this. With that said, that, that the, the low yesterday was 67, I believe, wasn't it? Let's just double-check this. Hold on just a minute here. I think that's what it was. Yeah, that was uh, 60. Yeah, yeah, 67, I believe. Hold on just a second, folks. I got to pay attention here because I, uh, I have an interest in this thing here. It would be right back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. 
Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I, uh, Norm Winsky was kind enough to send us a picture of over Naples, Florida. This is the, the super full moon. You can see it there. It's just uh, just really spectacular uh, in the evening there in uh, Naples. So we want to thank Norm for sending that on to us. Now, I want to go down memory lane here for just a little bit before we get Jeff Huge on. This next chart you're going to see here, this happens to be the uh, chart of uh, McDonald's, folks. This was on March the 5th of uh, 2003. Uh, at the end of February, uh, this is a weekly chart, of course. Uh, at the end of February, I was invited to go to Pepperdine University there in Malibu to uh, give a speech. I had given a speech there in April of uh, 2000 and warned them that the, you know, the NASDAQ had made a major top. They made some really drastic decisions and listened to what I had to say and saved a great deal of money. And so they had me back, uh, you know, a couple of years later. And uh, this is what happened. We were looking at this. I told them, I said, this was probably the best buy on the New York Stock Exchange because McDonald's was not going to go out of business. And when we were talking about it, it was trading around 12. I think the low was uh, – 12.12, uh, 12, I think was the low. It was probably 12.90, something like that, that week. And I said that was probably the best. And I think that went up. I don't know where McDonald's, I think it's above 21 now. I think it's, what, 2.85? Anyway, watch these patterns, folks. They don't work all the time. But when they do, sometimes they make a, they do really, really well. So just keep in mind that it's all about how much money you risk, not how much money you make. That's it. We've got somebody on the line, Mr. Z from Philly. What's up, Buttercup? <laughs> Ain't no Buttercup. What can I do for you, my friend? I wanted to ask you quickly just about soybeans. Uh, I see yes. you posted in Tiger TV the active or the lead old crop contract. That's the July soybean contract. Uh, just a very specific question, Larry. Um, yes. Now that uh, a uh, high was made, and it was that May corn 
that led the uh, rally up into a limit up uh, yes. high of 720 on Tuesday. Then we reversed. Mm-hmm. Um, how important a top is in the grains, of course, only time will tell. But uh, when you're trading the old cup, excuse me, old crop contracts now, are you favoring the buy side on dips, the sell side on, on rips, or going either direction if you see the patterns, please? I, I have to go either direction, John, because I really don't know what direction the market's going to go. So if I see a place where I can place a trade and not risk very much, then I know I can do it. Like I just bought, I, you know, I tried to buy July beans. I, I tried an order in at 501, and they got to 501 and a half. I didn't get filled, so I'm sitting there, you know, with empty uh, pictures in my hand. So now I'm done with beans for the rest of the day, but that's what I'm looking for. I had been short a little bit overnight here the last few days, but I'm just looking at shorter-term patterns. I'm going down to 30-minute charts because, it, and John, it's been trading absolutely spectacular off of Fibonacci numbers. You can see here the one that I posted in the room here, a perfect ABCD pattern coming in exactly at the 78% level at uh, 1501. And, uh, you know, it's rallied, uh, what's well, 1509 right now. So if you happen to be in that, you'd be in a break-even trade, which... Uh, uh, that's pretty much what I'm looking at. So that's what I'm trying to do is to you know limit my risk to just a very, very small amount. Very good. You answered the question. Uh, we'll look forward to your guest. Thanks a bunch. Okay. I didn't post that chart. Just a second. I'm going to do it right now. I thought I'd posted it. Uh, oh, that was the E-mini. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Here's the soybean one. They all look, They also look so darn much alike. I, I forget this. Hold on just a second here. We'll get it up here and take a look at it. Here we go. Here's here's July soybeans. And I was trying to buy at 501. It got to 501 and a quarter. And that was my mistake. I mean, I should have shaded, shaded it by a penny or so. But uh, and a really nice sell signal up there, as you can see, at the 61 percent retracement. And, you know, broke down. You know, that's a that's a lot of money. If you catch some of that, you know, the big one, of course, was the uh, the crude oil. The crude oil was a really nice one today. And the Dow Jones was a good one. And um, also we had um, the gold was another good one. So we had some good ones today, but uh, you know, it's not, that's not the way it is all the time. But if you, like I mentioned before, if you're interested in how I do these videos, uh, I'll be doing more through the middle of the night now, folks, because with this volatility that we're seeing, uh, I only sleep a few hours a night, which I've been doing ever since I was an altar boy back at St. Benedict's in Terre Haute. So I get by just fine. I took a nap after the markets opened. And uh, got moving a little bit, and right before we had the show here, so I'm quite refreshed. But uh, the market, the volatility that we're seeing now, folks, get ready. I mean, I've been saying this uh, since the uh, middle of last year, and uh, we are going to see volatility now for 2021. Will probably be the the, na the name of the that year will probably go down as volatility, and uh, whether that'll be the case or not, uh, I, I'm not sure. But um, that's what it looks like. Uh, from what I'm seeing here, we're seeing it in everything, folks. I mean, look at copper. Copper goes down 15 cents, up 15 cents. That used to be a weekly range. Now it does it on a 15-minute chart. So that's the, the key to uh, watching these things, that's for sure. Okay, now I wanted to talk to just a little bit about uh, one other thing that's important is that's a U.S. dollar. Uh, remember that move we had in the euro, the market took off. And went above that level that we were looking at. I want to bring this up because we were in that before the, the market, uh, the Fed came out. Uh, the market rallied all the way up to 121.90. That was the 78% level of 0.1, but that broke that pattern of the 135. That was a break-even trade. And now we're standing aside in the euro. We're waiting for a further uh, indication of whether that dollar index is going to hold that very, very critical 90-40 level. Um, this weekend, I will be doing probably more videos than I've done all year. I did think I did four last night because the markets were so active and just following the pattern so nicely. I, If they're not, I try to tell you that too. But the main thing I think we have to take away this week is the fact that this pattern that we've been looking at for two weeks now has finally completed up here. We hit this uh, last night. We hadn't quite reached it, but today we went up there and we hit that level, exactly the, the 1.618. We went a tiny bit above it for a short period of time uh, and then reversed. So all of that is lined up. I mean, the time is right. The price is right. The, the psychology of the market is right. Hey, if the market reverses and goes up 
close this on its high today, I'll go along. Well, no, I won't, but I mean that I don't buy breakouts, but uh, it looks looks like that's what it could be. I don't know. You know, uh, Jeff's got some really good stuff coming up and he's looking for much higher prices. And this might be just a very, very shallow rally like all the others have been. Remember the one we had last week? It rallied. It dropped 70 handles, folks. You know, 70 handles, and what did it do? It went back and made 120 candles. It went 100, you know, went 1.27 of that move. So, those are things you got to you got to realize. These markets, when they move, boy, you can't stand in front of them, and that's what pattern recognition tries to help you with. Doesn't always work, but when it does, it gives you some pretty good ideas of uh, you know where risk is, and that's what you got to focus on: how much you're risking, not how much money you're going to make. And don't worry about the losses because. Uh, it's just like it being a telephone salesman. You're just that closer to the next dial-in. Uh, if you don't get an answer, you call 30 people, you don't get a call, and then on that 31st one, you hit the home run. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Jeff Huge. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollars worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar. Silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights on the line today. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Larry. Thanks so much for having me. 
Hey, it's our pleasure. You've got some of the best charts in the business, my friend. And let's start out with the trend is your friend. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> Yeah, it always is, isn't it? Um, you know, there's a couple of ways of defining a trend. Um, some people like to draw lines from, you know, low points, and as long as we're above that line, we're above the trend. Another way would be to try and identify uh, parallel highs and lows and create a channel, and that's what we've done in this chart. We've channeled the market up from, you know, really it's, it's April levels to present, and um, we see a lot of upside to the upper boundary of that channel. Um, we've overlaid a couple of moving averages, which is another way to establish a trend. We've used a, a kind of intermediate term 50 day simple moving average, and then a little bit faster, shorter term 20 day exponential moving average, which puts a little more emphasis on the most recent price data. And, you know, all of the above are pointed up and to the right. We've got a series of, you know, higher lows and higher highs, and that uh, in, in, combination creates what we call in the uh, business an uptrend and we continue to feel that that uptrend is very much intact and has the potential to lift the stock market higher and if we're talking about the s p 500 we think that uh, upside target is a minimum of 4600 sometime this year possibly as early as august uh, 1st wow that's really good you've got an interesting chart about the breath could you explain to the folks what you're looking at here yeah, absolutely. So breadth is really the um, it, it's market participation. So the breadth of market participation really speaks to the quality of a bull market. The higher the market pr uh, participation, or the stronger the breadth, the the higher the quality of the uh, of the bull market advance, if you will. And what I've done is I've um, circled a couple of uh, prior peaks in the upper. Um, uh, a panel of that chart, and the prior peaks come in around 2003 and very late 2009. And if you recall, uh, back after the tech bubble burst, it bottomed in October of 2002, and then we saw that huge breath thrust to the upside in mid-2003, and that marked the beginning of a five-year cyclical bull market. Again, you might recall that the great financial crisis bottomed in March of 2009. Well, this reading came in about November of 2009, and that marked the beginning of a, you know, really decade-long secular bull market that may very well still be in progress by our work. And so we think these breath thrusts tend to mark the beginning of something, not the end of something. The lower panel in that chart actually speaks to the number of new 52-week highs that we're seeing in the S&P 500, and about 20% of the index is making new highs this month. And that also speaks to, you know, a, a very significant uh, a pace of new highs relative to the past three years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, you've got a really interesting chart about a market that's really getting massacred, and that's the bond market. So what's your feeling on interest rates, Jeff? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people are worried about the level, right? They're worried about the level of the 10-year. And if the 10-year goes to, say, 2%, I guess, as the narrative goes, uh, we could be facing some, you know, constraints, uh, maybe some multiple pressure. Uh, maybe it indicates that we're in a bond bull, a bear market. Um, I think at this point in the cycle, it's really the spread that matters right now, not the absolute level. If you take a look at the far right of this chart, you can see that the spread between the 10-year and the three-month, and also on the bottom panel, the 30-year and the three-month, is nowhere near past highs. In fact, we're so early in this, um, what I would say is that we need to see a steepening yield curve, which is effectively what this represents, uh, to in order to see an economic recovery. I mean, the two go hand in hand. So, you know, what I really think is happening out there is interest rates are more indicative of growth expectations being ratcheted up, uh, probably too slowly. I think the street's way behind the curve, as evidenced by what we saw with Apple and Google uh, uh, recently, as well as Facebook, all of which who blew analyst estimates out of the water in, in almost an epic fashion. Um, mm -hmm. one, one client that I and I were talking this morning, and I just happened to mention that, you know, Apple's upside surprise on revenue of $12.5 billion was more than 90% of S&P 500 companies produce in a year in revenue. So that's 
That's how significant <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, Apple's got a lot of followers, as they should. Now, you've got an interesting chart here from the St. Louis Fed, one of my favorite places down there in uh, St. Louis. Hold on one second here. Uh, this is the uh, break. You're talking about inflation containment. Is that what you're referring to on this chart? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's the five-year break-even rate. Uh, the St. Louis Fed publishes that every single month. Uh, actually, I think they update the chart uh, daily. But, um, you know, the last uh, reading on that was like uh, 2.54%, I believe. And, you know, frankly, uh, when we think about um, that level relative to past inflationary experiences, it's it's not even close. In fact, back in 2005, when housing was at its all-time, you know, uh, um, uh, zenith, right, um, we were slightly mm-hmm. higher than that and most recently in uh, 2011, again, when inflation was kind of the topic or concern du jour. Uh, break-evens were even higher than they are today. And, you know, they're just not anywhere to be concerned about at this point uh, under 3%. Wow, that's that's really something. And you see it pretty much other than in the meat markets. You don't see it too much. Now, you've got another chart. That's uh, very interesting because we have a lot of commodity f- people here being farmers and stuff and uh, cattlemen. Uh, these are resistance level you're looking at going back to 2009, this downtrend line. Boy, it certainly looks like it's valid, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. And, and so, you know, the data here is unadjusted data uh, for the CRB index, which is a, a complement of 19 different commodities. Um, it's not equal weighted anymore as it once was fairly heavily um uh, oriented toward energy, but it's closer to equal weight than, say, the GS um, uh, Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, which is, I think, something like 50 or 60 percent energy. This is maybe more like 25. But, you know, mm-hmm. really, I think at the end of the day, when we look at this, we've got to respect the downtrend and we've got to respect the resistance level, which is basically uh, a function of prior lows and prior highs coming into uh, play anywhere within the next two and a half to five percent upside. Now, I think a lot of what we've seen in terms of commodity inflation has more to do with supply demand dislocations on the supply side, not the demand side so much. Um, I mean, demand has been um, contained basically due to economic, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 collapse back in uh, the fall, or I'm sorry, the spring of last year. But I mean, you know, that also had a big impact on production. And uh, it even goes into lumber. A lot of people are concerned about lumber prices, but, you know, the sawmills were shut down for six months. Uh, we get a lot of lumber from overseas uh, input into the U.S. as well, as well as Canada. And those borders have been closed. Um, shipping containers are stacked up empty. Uh, there's a big dislocation in terms of transit transportation and international commerce and i think that's having an impact on commodity prices just a minute i want to let the folks know how they reach you and i have a question for one of our listeners about lumber absolutely we'll be right back folks jeff huge alpha insights Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Okay, Jeff, uh, we're talking with Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights. We've got a, uh, one of our listeners has asked about uh, if you do any hedging for the lumber business. I don't do any hedging for it, but, uh, you know, one of the things that I would point out is that lumber made its all-time high on uh, April 27th, and that was also a Montgomery cycle term date. So I'd be looking for uh, the market to do the hedging for you. Okay, now, the next thing is you want to tell the folks how they could reach you, Jeff. Absolutely. Best way to find me is at my website, jwhinvestment.com. But I'm also uh, on Twitter where I put a lot of interesting charts, at alpha underscore insights. Uh, I have a lot of uh, articles and interview videos available on my LinkedIn. And I'm also part of the Trade Exchange, which uh, is an app you can download from uh, the Apple App Store or Google uh, and uh, you can follow my trades live on Alpha in, or at Alpha Insights on the Trade Exchange. Wow, that's really cool. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us today, and we'll have you on again in a couple of weeks if you have the time. We really like to see your charts, and you're you know very very successful, and we like to hear what you have to say. Always a pleasure, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And if you see Rich Anderson, give him my regards. Okay. Will do. <laughs> okay. All right, folks, Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, and I wanted to share with you a chart that Jeff had just showed us. I've added something to it because this was very instrumental in my cycle work. What Jeff was showing us here in this long-term, um, yeah, you can believe that lumber, May lumber, 1454. Just a few months ago, Mr. Z, it was trading for 300 and change. That's what you call very, very expensive lumber. Now, this is a monthly chart. You'll see 2009 was the high. That's when the bottom of the stock market, of course. But you see that trend line that's there. That is a valid trend line. And the reason why it's valid is each point that it hits is a Fibonacci ratio. It'll either be 786, 382, 618. And that's why it is a valid trend line. So what we're coming up to right now uh, as we're looking here on this monthly chart into 2021, that's going to be a 50% retracement of the high that we made in 2009, all right? And it's going to be a 61% retracement of the high that we made back in 2014. So that means it's a valid trend line. Now, if that if that gets above 220, that valid trend line will be broken. It will be highly suggestive of higher prices to come in commodities. So that's why this chart is very, very important. These trend lines, uh, when they're valid like that, they, they really do mean something. 
And that's the main thing. If you were to take and draw the trend line from 2014, you know, to 3000 to 2019, you'll see that once we broke above the 180 level, that was a big breakout in in commodity markets. And of course, we've seen that in the grains and all that other stuff. I personally don't think that grain market is over, folks. It's just having some really wild swings. And it's it's uh, what you're expecting. That's why we're seeing wild swings in everything, folks. Copper, stock market, you know, everything is doing that. So let's remind ourselves that these things are, are here to trade. They're not here to fall in love with. You know, you marry your wife. You don't marry your position. So don't get too concerned about these things when they have these big sell-offs. I mean, you stop and think a person that's long from uh, 4,100 in the S&P to see it go from 4,211 down to uh, 4,160. What? Well, that's only 50 handles. Well, we dropped 60, 70 handles last week and went up May new highs. So it's not a it's not a big deal at all. So the main thing you want to book some profits along the way, and that's what you that's what you try to do. So little by little, just stay in the middle, as they say in the old days of Jesse Livermore. We want to take a look here now at Bitcoin, folks. We're having a little bit of a sell-off today. You'll be able to see here that we did make a 382 retracement on this last rally. It got up to 55,000. We're now trading at 53,000. Great deal of support at 47,000, folks. Below 47,000 is going to ring a giant cautionary yellow uh, flag for Bitcoin. That doesn't mean other, you know, cryptocurrencies are going to be doing that. You know, Cardano is still right on its high, and a few of the others are too. But that just means that Bitcoin could be under some possible pressure. And at 47,000, it's still relatively overpriced compared where it was 12 years ago when it was trading for just pennies. Uh, I think someone asked me what the most important thing today is. The most important thing today, folks, is this. I'm going to bring it up to you one more time. I was going to do it at the end of the show anyway, and that's this move right here that we're seeing here. It's three drive to a top pattern in the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the most um, fairest and broadest of all the indices. It used to be called the Knife, and it used to be traded at the, uh, the Knife Exchange in New York, but after Paul Tudor Jones switched over to the S&P, you know, they lost interest and uh, the volume just dripped. But they still use the index for calculating mutual funds, but uh, that's what they use it for. It's really broad. It's like it's 2,200 of the most heavily traded, most volatile and most liquid stocks in the world, because there's international stocks in that, too. So it's it's very, very fair. It's all cap-weighted. It's not price-weighted like the Dow Jones, and it's not heavily skewed like the NASDAQ and stuff like that. So that's a few of the things that we're paying attention to. So these are just a few of the things that we're looking at here today. We've had a pretty good rally here in the S&P. Uh, recently, we just got down to 68. This rallied up to 82. Uh, it should have some strong resistance at 1890, 41.95. But a close above, you know, 42.04 today would probably say, well, we might even go up and make another higher high. But if we take out the high that we made last night, at uh, 14, at, at uh, 4211, that will signal that uh, this is not over and it's going to go a whole lot higher. That's uh, that's the bottom line from looking at these. Now, those charts that I sent from uh, Andy Piccioli over in the UK, um, he has uh, showed 1971, 1901, 1981, and recently where we are right now, that these are. Uh, anniversary dates that have been very, very prominent uh, in the past. Now, if you remember 1901 to 1981 was, what? You'll never guess this, folks, 80 years. And the one from 1981 to 1971 was 10 years. So it's a probably a I think it's a decentennial cycle or something like that, 10, 10 years, 40 years, 80 years. But the fact that it hit those anniversary dates is important. What's important from our perspective is what uh, uh, Stan Harley hit and also uh, Norm Nixon, because Norm was talking about the Astro part of it, okay? And Stan Harley was talking about the Fibonacci or Lucas numbers of it. So it's all fitting together. That's basically the what we're watching here. So we'll see that. And whether it's going to continue or not, we'll have to, uh, you know, wait and see. But those are a few things. If you have any questions, folks, 877-927-6648. And uh, we hope oh, they just told me there is one open line. If you wanted to call in, we'll be happy to. I've already seen some requests for the Apple video, and I will uh, certainly get that out. If you're in the 24-7 and you didn't get the Apple video, folks, 
I don't know why, because most people did, but maybe a few of these didn't. But uh, they go out pretty quickly now, and we'll find out how it works. But the, any move above 140 now in the Apple would tell us that we're most probably getting ready to uh, go up to make new highs easily because the old high was just at 145. But we stopped right at the 786 last night, and that so far has held it. 877-927-6648. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of bionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at DFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I'm going to take just a quick uh, a gander here at uh, one of our favorite stocks, which is Mr. Appel, and we'll get it up here to take a look at it. And then I wanted to – how about before we do that, let's do the – Let's do the Dow Jones here for the uh, folks here. This is the Dow Jones uh, E-mini. We're having one heck of a rally here off of this uh, low we came down. We went all the way down to 33.60. We're now rallying up, and we're just about right at the 61% retracement of the day right now as we speak. Uh, if we get above uh, thir uh, 330 33,900, uh, you want to be cashing out, uh, you know, lock your profit in there, 
And because we're having big swings here, we dropped from 33.9 all the way down. We dropped 300 points, and we've already taken 200 of it back. And we're right at the 61% retracement there right now. And then we're going to take a quick look at Mr. Appel here on an hourly chart because this is one that has been uh, – under a little bit of pressure so far today, let's just blow it up so we'll be able to see it. This is all part of what we were talking about earlier, and that is the fact that we've dropped from 39 uh, all the way down to 32. That happens to be a big, uh, big drop, but uh, there's strong support there because we're sitting right at the 78% level here at the uh, 132 level. So that's another one that looks... Uh, you know, very, very interesting. So keep in mind, folks, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. And that's the key to what we're doing here. So remember to do something nice for your neighbors, especially. And by the way, this is the first Saturday in May. And don't forget it. Look for Rock My World. Rock My World, folks. The number 17 horse, which was a 19 or something like that. The name of the horse is Rock My World, trained by John Sadler out of Santa Anita, California. I've known John for a long time, nice fellow. He's 65 years old, I believe now, and um, has a very colorful career. But that horse has a chance. He won the Santa Anita Derby easily, and he's, uh, he's live. 877-927-6648. 